Hello, this is a show and tell and possibly a repair video on a Coda Phone Model 222 telephone answering machine. I just purchased this on eBay because it uh, looked interesting and I wanted to check it out. I already tried it out previously. In fact, I recorded a beautiful video on doing a full diagnostic and inspection on it. I forgot to record sound when I was doing it. And uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense without sound, so. Unfortunately, you don't get to watch me turn this on for the first time, but I have tried it out and it actually works reasonably well. This is not a cassette tape machine. There's no cover that opens up to reveal any cassette tapes, uh, certainly not digital. This has a built-in tape mechanism. It does have two tapes, one for an outgoing announcement and one for the incoming announcement, incoming uh, recording. We'll take a look at that. Like I say, it does basically function, and I'll turn it on and demonstrate some of the basic functions. First, let's play the greeting that's in the machine. I have not re-recorded the greeting. I kind of like to hear what's in a machine when I first buy it. Sometimes it's kind of interesting. So we will hit the announcement check and listen to what it has already re recorded. Hello, you've reached paramedical labels of Kukamunga. I'm sorry we're not able to get your call at this moment. But if you leave a message, we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. Thank you for calling. Bye. Greeting works and does answer and play the greeting and record a call. I tried it out previously with my cell phone. I hooked this up to my landline, called it from my cell phone. I heard that greeting and was able to leave a message. The only problem that I found with this machine is the message that it recorded did not sound very good when it played back. Let's listen to what I recorded previously. Okay, that's what I recorded. Doesn't sound very good. I think we'll take a look inside and see if we can find the problem. My guess is the incoming message tape is worn out. I did clean the tape heads in the previous video, which uh, uh, wasn't any good, but I did clean the heads. They were not dirty. There's no obvious wear on the heads. It looks very nice inside. We'll take a look inside in a moment, but it doesn't sound good. The way this works is the announcement, outgoing announcement, the greeting, is on a tape and as soon as that tape is done playing, it rewinds itself automatically. The incoming message tape that we just heard is a much larger tape. It's still on a, a spool. There's a, a, a spool of tape and a take-up reel that we'll see inside. And after you play a message, it stops once you reach the end of the messages. And now if we put it in auto-record, now it's ready to record calls again and the next call will be added to that tape so it does not automatically erase phone calls. If you want to erase a call, hit rewind. Now the call light went out. The call light is just on, meaning the tape is not rewound. That's basically all that means. So if you play something, like we just did earlier, and if I shut it off right there, it says we got a call even though we didn't just get a new call just because the tape is not rewound. Pretty neat. Let's take it apart. I did unplug the power, by the way. It has a 12 volt power adapter, 12 volt AC. It's kind of a neat unit. Nice little plastic brick there, coat of foam branded, 12 volt AC output. It's pretty rough. I'm tempted, I would like to use this machine as my home answering machine. But if I do, I might at least replace that brick. I think we can get it apart just by removing these back three screws. Here is the tape mechanism, the control circuitry. And this, if I get this in shot, this wheel right here is the supply reel for the outgoing announcement. And this is the take up reel. This is the supply reel for the incoming message, and that's the take-up reel. So, much larger incoming message reel than the outgoing message, which makes sense because you want room to record lots of 
incoming messages. I'm going to plug it back in and we'll first play the announcement and then we'll play that message just so you can see how the mechanism works inside. Hello, you've reached paramedical labels of Kukamonga. I'm sorry we're not able to get your call at this moment, but if you leave a message, we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. Thank you for calling. Bye. So you can see the take-up reel pulling the tape through here across the heads from the supply reel. And it's interesting, as the tape unwinds from the supply wheel reel, this spring, this cable gets wound around this part of the reel. This spring pulls tension on it, so once the clutch releases for the take-up reel, it allows that tape to zip right back inside. Kind of a neat mechanism, simple and effective. Now let's play the incoming message. You won't see this hardly on the camera, okay, but you're hearing me through the cell phone. this reel right here is moving in this direction, this reel is moving in this direction, and the tape is going the same way as the outgoing message across the lower part of the head. There's actually two record playback heads on top of each other. One thing I do not see in this machine is an erase head. I do not know how it handles erasing tapes. It has to be a way, I just don't know what it is. I'm going to watch the tape going across the head again as I play it back. You may not be able to see this on camera. But it's, uh, the tape is aligned pretty well with the head. It's going through the guides properly. There's a guide here, there's a guide on the head, and there's a guide right here. And the tape is being pulled quite smoothly through those guides. So I don't think it's an alignment problem, which further supports my theory that it's just worn out tape. And it appears to be the same size as regular cassette tape tape. So I'm wondering if I can just spool out some tape from a cassette tape and wind it onto these reels and replace that faulty tape. I'm going to have a look off of camera and see if that's feasible. It's interesting to note on this machine that there is no capstan and capstan roller and pinch roller like you see in a regular tape deck. The tape is being pulled across the heads just as it uh, is being drawn into the take-up reel. The motor in this machine is actually acting upon the take-up reel for both the outgoing and the incoming recordings. Uh, that's a pretty shaky system, but it seems to work. You would never do that, never do that for a professional recorder but hey, this is just an answering machine. So as the tape winds around the take-up reel, the tape is going to be spinning, or the tape is going to be pulled faster and faster across the heads as the effective size of that reel gets larger as the tape winds upon that reel. So it would not be practical to record a tape in a different machine and then load it into this answering machine because this doesn't record at a consistent speed. But it must work. I removed the covers from these two reels and I'm going to try to take them both out. I did rewind this first, this rewound as far as it wanted to. And I'm hoping to not disturb the outgoing announcement, the greeting tape. Of course, if I use this machine myself, I'll record a new greeting and I'll see how well it re-records. So that's the configuration the tapes are in right now. I'm going to sacrifice a 3M AVX20. This is pretty good tape, but a 20 minute tape is pretty useless for anything I would do except this. So we can just take this cassette tape apart and harvest the tape out of the inside. One thing I'll have to make sure when I go to re-spool this tape is that I get the emulsion side of the tape going the correct direction. So this is the tape out of the answering machine in the same orientation that it was installed and so the head is contacting this part of the tape. So when I put this tape on this reel, I need to make sure that same way the head touches the tape right here. So this needs to go on the reel that same direction. Neat little way of holding the tape in here. It's a plastic wedge that will need to pop out somehow. There we go. With that wedge out, we can just peel the tape out like that. This old tape is really clingy, sticky. 
almost like sticky shed syndrome. I don't see any evidence of that specifically, but it's sure clingy stuff. I'm realizing that there was a whole lot more than 20 minutes worth of tape in this reel. Of course, 20 minutes is for both sides. This is what I'm installing here it would be 10 minutes worth of tape if it were ran at the usual tape speed. I think it's 1 7 8 inches per second. I'm not sure exactly what speed the answering machine is running at. It's not necessarily the same as a cassette tape. But I think this will be enough tape. There we go. The reels are installed, and I'll reinstall these covers that I took off earlier. Cover goes on, then there's a little plastic washer, and then an E-clip. Let's see if I can reinstall this without having to search around the garage to figure out where it flew. There we go. Okay, it's back together and I've reapplied power. Let's first check the outgoing announcement. Hello, you've reached the paramedical label. That works. I'll just hit play and see what happens. Oh, I have music on this tape. They should have bulk erased it first. Still doesn't sound very good. I'm surprised. I mean, we just do still have a head problem, but like I cleaned it pretty well. Rewind it. And shut it off. We can do a memo record and test out the incoming message tape without having to make a phone call to it. Hello, testing one, two. This is a test of the incoming message tape on a Codafone 222. Hello, YouTube. All right, let's rewind it and play it back. Well, that was a waste of time. There wasn't anything wrong with that tape. My initial assumption was incorrect. I'm not going to edit this out. I'll leave it in. Hey, that's the mistake I made. We still have a problem. And I'm confident that the new tape I installed was, was good. So, I need to look a little deeper. Okay, after some more investigation, the problem was not the old tape. Although, I don't mind replacing the old tape because, like I say, it's feeling clingy and sticky. The problem are these little foam pads. So I did some playing around with this off camera, and I found that if I applied a little extra attention to the supply reel, that it sounded fine. It would, would record fine and it would play fine. So that tension is nece necessary to make sure that the tape is being held tight against the heads, because there's no pressure pad against the head like there is in a typical cassette. There's a little pressure pad right there. That doesn't happen here. It just relies on the tension supplied by the foam pad on the supply reel. There's also a foam pad on the take-up reel. So both of these are deteriorated. They're falling apart. If you've ever found old foam, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This stuff is just turned to dust. So I have here some new foam. Should last another 30 years. I'll stick that in there and see what happens. By the way, I found a date code in this and this was made toward the very end of 1977. I looked at all the components and the newest date code is 7751. So that's the 51st week of 1977. Through the magic of video editing, new foam was installed. Now I'll reinstall the tapes and see how it works. Okay, the new tape is installed. Let's try it out using the memo record function. Hello, this is a test of a Codafone 222. Testing 1, 2, 3, testing 1, 2, 3. Hello, YouTube. Rewind. And play. Not a lot better. More work to do. Okay, this is going to be the end of this video for now. I hope to have a part two. As it stands right now, I need more tension on the supply reel. And I have another problem I just noticed. This, the incoming message tape is rewound all the way. 
but it still shows that we have a call. So if I play it, And then I'll, let it run for a while. I'll stop it, rewind it, and it just stays in rewind. The motor is still running unless I manually stop it. And then it still says we have a call. So there's some mechanism in this machine to detect that the message tape is rewound all the way, and that's not working. I've looked around inside and I can't see anything obvious. It's not based on tension, there's no switch, there's no foil sensing tape, and nothing to, to sense a foil sensing tape. So I don't know how this thing detects that it's at the end of the tape. I let it run for quite a while, thinking maybe it's like a timer-based uh, system. That didn't do it.